So you're getting frustrated. You think you're missing out on the real estate market due to the you know, low inventory, high prices. Well, we're actually going to piggyback on our last podcast and we're going to go over, and if you join us for that one, you know, we actually started touching on what a REIT is and how do you get invested in these REITs, um, the real estate investment trust. So we're going to kind of dive into that today in a little bit more in depth. And I'm going to give you a couple options and things that I think that as an investor, you might want to look at. So we've been doing our homework and kind of going through different companies that offer the services of, of allowing you to invest in a REIT. And one of the first things you're going to want to do is, so if you just, you can, obviously anybody can Google these. And as we did, this, there's a couple that came up that I think were worth looking at. So one of the first ones that I found was a, a company called Cadre. And, you know, I went on there and I'm looking to see exactly what it is that they offer. And one of the things you're going to notice is a lot of these websites are going to ask you a couple of basic questions before you even get into their site. So for the most part, um, similar questions. So when you go on to Cadre, you're going to say, you know, it's going to ask you, you know, which of the following describes you? Are you an individual investor or you are, are you a financial advisor, right? So if you're an individual investor and you click on that option, you know, the next question they're going to ask you, are you an accredited investor? And that's a very important question to ask. And I guess you really need to know, like, well, are you an accredited investor? Many people don't know what the requirements are and aren't really quite sure what that even means. Um, now, they do a great job here, as do all these sites, of breaking down exactly what it means to be an accredited investor. So we'll just go right through some of the requirements right here. So generally, you're an, uh, you are an accredited investor if you follow any of the following. If your annual income is greater than $200,000 for the last two years, if your joint household income is greater than $300,000 over the last two years, or if your net worth is greater than $1 million, excluding your primary residence. So that is pretty much the basic definition of what an accredited investor is. Um, now, you can also go on the SEC website and get the full definition. But that's important to know, you know, as you're getting into these things, because that's going to base, you know, for example, if you hit no that you're not an accredited investor with Cadre, it's going to come right up and say, I'm sorry, but we're only accepting accredited investors currently. So that's okay not to get frustrated. If you don't meet these criteria, if you're a newer or a novice at real estate investing, there's another site that I think you should look at, which is called Fundrise. Now, Fundrise is also great, not only the ease of using it, but also the information that they actually give you. Um, and if you go around their website here, you can actually go right to strategy, which I kind of appreciated about this. And it says real estate strategies. And this is great because this actually gives you a flow chart. And we'll put these pictures up on the channel so you can see this to kind of give you an idea of where should you be putting your money and what kind of rates should you expect based on your tolerance for risk. So for example, if you're looking for a 10% or more total rate of return, they label you as opportunistic, and that's going to be a relatively higher risk REIT that you would actually go and invest in. The next level down they actually have, if you are looking for somewhere between 8 to 12%, that's considered a value add. Again, a little bit on the higher risk side, but you're, you're, you're moving back into more of a, a neutral position. Um, if you're looking for 4 to 6%, you know, they consider that to be a core REIT, which again, now your, your risk is getting even lower. And then the lowest risk level or tolerance they consider to be fixed income, 4 to 8%. And the reason that they're going to give you these ranges, and they don't just say, like, say, 4% or 7%, is because when you're getting into a REIT, you're actually buying into a, you know, multiple properties. And the reality is you have to wait to see what those properties return before you can actually for sure say, well, I got this return or that return, right? So they have to be able to calculate this. They're going based off of past performance. So Fundrise is definitely another one that I would suggest. One of the, And I really like this site, especially for the ease of use and the fact that they have a lot of information for those of you that are just starting off that is relative in, to you and, you know, just, just great. Their resources 
tab is great. Their strategy, they give you an overview. They give you why real estate. They tell you what their investments are. Um, and this is actually for accredited and non-accredited investors. So I believe you can actually get into these REITs for as little as $10, believe it or not. Uh, if you actually look at their platform, they actually tell you as little as $10, or as much as 10,000. Uh, and what they pretty much do here is based on your investment, they kind of put you into different categories and you have to be careful with this too. There's different fee structures attached to these different categories based on your investment. And typically what you're gonna find with REITs is as your investment goes up, some of the fees and costs of getting in go down. So you definitely wanna always do your homework and make sure you understand exactly what the fees are that you're gonna end up paying. And typically, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't think a lot of them do a great job of putting that out there on their websites. I would honestly get a hold of somebody at these website or at these companies and really dive in and get to understand what is the true cost of getting in and not only just getting in, but getting out of, of a REIT for these companies. Another one that I wanted to bring up if if you've not heard of it is Cardone Capital. Now, for those of you that don't know what Cardone Capital is, um, real estate investor Grant Cardone, he's very big on social media. You might have seen him on YouTube or uh, social media, but he's a big time real estate investor and he actually has uh, a site that you can go on to, which is CardoneCapital.com and where you can actually invest in his deals for a minimum of $1,000. Now, one of the things that I really like about Cardone Capital is, you know, if you follow him, you, you know that he understands the market. One of the things I love about him is his strategic ability to go into the right markets, understanding demographics, where people are moving to, where they're moving away from. You know, and his current investments, he's very open about what his targeted in internal rate of return is on these. Uh, how many total units are in these buildings, you know, and if you're ready to invest, um, it looks like right now he's actually only got one that you can invest in. And that's one of the downfalls of Cardone Capital is, you know, you're almost kind of waiting for Grant Cardone to go out and get another one, so to speak, that you can get into. So you might have limited opportunities there. As where with the other ones, you can kind of get in there and invest at any time because they're they're constantly investing in portfolios. Uh, with Cardone Capital, you're typically investing in a property. So it might be a 500 unit apartment complex, but it's really just that property that you're investing in. As where with some of these other REITs, you're putting money in and it's actually getting spread across a portfolio. Um, so those are three different options that I would highly recommend you at least investigate. And again, you always want to get with these people and talk about, you know, what are your fees, exit fees? Because again, they're not very clear on that. A lot of them will sit there and claim as Fundrise does right on top of their website, you know, that we achieved a 23% average return across all clients in 2021. Well, that sounds great, but did you receive 23% or is that what their total return was? And then after fees, you, you get seven, eight percent. Still not a bad idea, especially if you're sitting on cash in the bank. I'd rather make seven, eight percent rather than lose money in a savings account. But that's why you want to contact these companies and just really get as much information as you can, especially what are you going to get hit with on exit strategy? Um, how long are your funds tied up? Because a lot of times these REITs might have different time frames, like you can't touch it for three or five years or until the, you know, the, the property is sold. So again, do your homework, but definitely consider REITs. If you are a beginning investor, especially, and you're having a hard time getting into this market with the prices going up, the inventory just being so low, people are getting beat out left and right. You know, you have, um, now I've said this before, you've got companies like BlackRock coming into areas, paying $70,000 above asking price, no contingencies and scraping up all these properties. So how do you compete? In that kind of a marketplace, this this definitely could be your avenue. Now, Fundrise and Cardone Capital are on Facebook as well. If you want to check out their Facebook pages, I could not find Cadre on Facebook. Doesn't mean they're not out there. I just couldn't find them. They might go under something else. But definitely do your homework. See what's out there. Um, and I love reach and, and getting these people on Facebook is great because if you can find people that are already invested into these REITs, reach out to those people. 
You know, ask them what their experience is. How have they done? You know, get as much information as possible. But I wanted to throw this out there, show you guys what else is available. Again, for those of you that are frustrated, possibly just losing out on deals, you know, in your current marketplace, given the current market conditions. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you could remember, like, subscribe to our channel. We're always here to give you relevant in real estate investment information. And just remember that we're always here to help you build your empire.